interest only locally. He's an expert at that. Mr. Ramesh is an expert at that. RTIs, getting out information. The worst thing that we don't have today is data. Use every mechanism available to you legally to push for data and that will automatically open the Pandora's box for further legal action. What sort of data? One, data with respect to the original holdings of a certain temple. How many properties does it hold? Second, what have you done with those properties and is there transparency in the manner in which those properties have been dealt with? There are statutory obligations on executive officers and state machinery to maintain records with respect to expenses on a monthly basis. Correct me if I'm wrong, sir. Temple, is it? Yes, yes. Uh, some of the information which you have got under RTI, it's very difficult to get from Tamil Nadu government information that RTI. And we still haven't got. <laughs> no, we have got, huh? but for, like say, the percentage of success will be about 5%. Right. You, you have to go on a first appeal, then you have to go on a second appeal to the state information commissioner. The state information commissioner is appointed by the government. So you know how it works. Anyway, we got enough uh, information, like we got audit reports of at least 50 temples, major temples. And we have application before the Supreme Court asking for external audit of the yeah. institutions of these three states. See, you must remember there is no external audit for the temples in Tamil Nadu. Whether it gets 20 crore income or 5,000 income. Correct. There is no external audit from 1976, number one. Number two, from RTI, you can really find out how these people's minds think what all they do with the temple money. Where is the property gone? Like in 1986, Tamil Nadu temples had 5.25 lakh acres of agricultural land. Right now, they say we have 4.75 lakh acres of agricultural land. Where did the 50,000 acres go? And in today's real estate value, this 50,000 acres would be like Correct. at least 10,000 crores. Only Tamil Nadu. Only Tamil Nadu. And Andhra Pradesh has got more lands than Tamil Nadu for temples. And uh, under RTI, we came to know, I'll just take one more minute. Please. We came to know that there is one temple in the um, southeast corner of Tamil Nadu called Vedaranyam Temple. The temple was actually administered by Sri Lankan Jaffna Tabils because it's only 60 kilometers across the sea. They had built for this temple over one century 17,000 acres of land and many of them are salt pans. The central government has 2,400 acres of the salt pans and they are giving, guess how much per acre per annum, the central government to the temple, rupees two. Sir, also share with them the realization of lease revenue. I'll just give you an example, 29 crore square feet, in Delhi you say square yards, but they're square feet of sites. The sites have the um, advantage of being within the village, unlike agricultural lands, or within the town, or within the city. In Chennai, in one side you have an area called Boat Club Road, which is the most expensive area in Chennai. On the other side, there are 305 grounds of land belonging to Kapalishwara Temple. As per the official valuation, for each ground per month, the rental is 3,75,000. But for the 305 grounds, government is realizing 3,000 rupees per month. <laughs> you know, if you get the 3 lakh per ground per month, there need not be any, any Hindu poor child paying for their education across one mile of the temple. See, that's the, that's the Here's charity the we part. are denied. Correct. And I'll just to add to this. Each time you go to the government asking for funds for establishment of Veda schools or anything which is meant for keeping those traditions alive, they say, Paisa nahi hai. Kaha se hoga? This is what you're doing. If you wanted to realize the amounts, you could have done so. In fact, sir, shared I, with me. I, I missed the point. Right. Tamil Nadu government, with all these properties, 4.75 lakh acres, 29 crores crores. square feet of land and the 22,000 buildings, they are collecting about 
80 crore rupees per annum. And to do that, they are taking administrative and audit fee about 120 crores. That means temples are making a loss of 40 crores. Where does the 40 crore come from? From us, the Hundi money and the Archana ticket money. Not just that. Yeah. What they are actually collecting is not 100% of the value that is to be realized. <laughs> it's not the entire lease that they are even supposed to get. It's a fraction of it. It's 1% of what they are supposed to get. And here's the thing. Under section 92 and the erstwhile section 76 of the 1951 legislation, the 1951 legislation, they collect a fee for the services that they provide to the temple. You see, they are providing a service and they charge for that service. They require you to appoint salaried executive officers as part of that particular framework. You are supposed to pay salaries. This is, first of all, there is a question of unconstitutionality in this entire thing. And second is the sheer incompetence, monstrous incompetence, criminal inefficiency with funds that belong to this community, with resources that belong to this community. When this question was brought in the 1954 decision, the, the state says, no, no, this is actually what, what we collect as a fee. It's not a tax. It's a fee for our services. Have you really made good those services? And importantly, Anybody who knows a fair bit of how societies and particularly not-for-profit societies are administered, administration costs are supposed to be kept to the minimum. There is a cap usually. Why? Because the money is not meant for gratification of the employees, state appointees and anybody else or the administrators. It is meant for that particular institution and the beneficiaries of the particular institution. Administrators have become beneficiaries of this particular institution because their administrative costs have no cap. And if there is any amount that is ever left in the money that you've collected by way of a fee, why is it that you don't invest it right back into the temple? On a temple or any Hindu religious institution, the obligation is if there is a surplus money that you have, you will invest it back into the community or you'll put it in the state coffers. Is the state doing this with respect to the surplus money that is collected from temples? Honestly, you need data and once you have data, these people will scamper and run for cover because they don't have answers. There have been institutions where he has asked for details of appointment of an executive officer. The order itself is missing. They don't even have records of the orders for appointment of an executive officer. These questions are being raised before the Supreme Court. 